Correct the equation of the circle in the form x minus a squared plus y minus b squared is equals to r squared. We are given an equation. It is said to be x squared plus y squared minus 4x minus 2y minus 13 is equals to 0. Before we do anything fancy, let's just group the like terms. If we do that, we're going to have x squared minus 4x plus y squared minus 2y. Let's take uh, the constant to the right hand side. If we do that, this is going to be equals to 13. The next step you probably want to take is to complete the square. What do we mean by that? So we have x minus 4 divided by 2 squared plus y minus 2 divided by 2 squared being equals to 13 plus minus 4 divided by 2 squared plus minus 2 divided by 2 squared. There we go. So we're going to have x minus 2 squared plus y minus 1 squared being equals to 18. So that is the equation of the circle. Let's do 4.2. Write down the coordinates of n and the length of nt. So n is our center of the circle and nt is the radius. So the coordinates of n from our equation, the x value is going to be 2 and the y value is going to be 1 at the center. So we're saying that the x value is 2 and the y value is 1. And then how can we find the length of nt? Like we've already deduced, nt is the radius. And on our equation, we have radius squared. So we can go ahead and say that nt is equal to the square root of 18. Because 18 is the radius squared and nt is our radius. So nt shall be equal to the square root of 18. Let's move to 4.8. Uh, so in 4.3, determine the equation of the tangent QT in the form y is equal to mx plus c. So let's go ahead and do some analysis. We have QT right here as our tangent. In order to find the gradient of QT, because we need to find the gradient if we want the equation, we're going to have to find the coordinates of T. Well, we don't have to necessarily find the coordinates of T for the gradient because we can just use uh, the coordinates of N, which is Q and 1, and the coordinates of P. But then in order to find C, we're going to need a point that lies on the line QT. So let's just go ahead and find the coordinates of T. And then I'm going to use the coordinates of T to find the gradient. And after finding the gradient, we're going to use the same coordinates of T to find C. So how are we going to find the coordinates of T? TP is a diameter. So that tells us that N is the midpoint of pt so we can use the midpoint theorem we can say that x of n is equal to x of t plus x of p divided by 2 so x of n that is 2 x of t it's our it's what we're interested in x of p is 5 divided by 2 if we cross multiply we get 4 is equal to x of t plus 5 so x of t is equal to minus 1. Uh, now we just need y of t. y of n is going to be equal to y of t plus y of p divided by t. What is y of n? That is 1. And then y of t, what we're interested in, y of p is 4 divided by 2. We cross multiply, we get 2 is equal to y of t plus 4. So y of t is equal to 2 minus 4, which is minus 2. So the coordinates of t, we have minus 1 and minus 2. So we can go ahead and find the gradient of qt. The tangent is perpendicular to the radius. So if we find the gradient of the radius, then we can use that to find the gradient of the tangent. We're going to have the gradient of nt being equal to 
y of n minus y of t divided by x of n minus x of t y of n uh, that is 1 minus y of t which is minus 2 we have it right here and then everything divided by x of n which is 2 minus x of t which is minus 1 so we have 3 divided by 2 minus minus 1 that is 3 so the gradient of nt is 1 right so now we can see that the gradient of nt multiplied by the gradient of qt is equal to minus 1 so the gradient of qt is going to be equal to minus 1 divided by the gradient of nt which is 1 so the gradient of qt is equal to minus 1 so now we know that for our equation of the straight line of the tangent y is equal to minus x plus c now we just need to find c we're gonna substitute t of coordinates minus 1 and minus 2 if we do that we're gonna get minus 2 in place of y and minus 1 in place of x plus c so minus 2 is equal to 1 plus c minus 3 is equal to c so now we have y being equal to minus x minus 3 and now we have the equation of qt uh, let's move ahead and do 4.4 so in 4.4 the circle with center S of coordinates A and B touches the circle with center N externally at T. QT is a tangent to both of these circles. If NS is equal to 3 and T, determine the coordinates of S. Yeah, there's a lot going on there. So let's go ahead and uh, have a sketch for that circle and then try make sense of uh, the situation we have so they touch at t the touch at t and then qt is also a tangent at that circle yeah another key point is that they touch externally because if the question says they just touch then that is very unclear but now if we know that they touch externally uh, we can do something about that well let's just take that as our circle and try make something of it so it has a center s of coordinates a and b so the coordinates of t we have minus one and minus two uh, what other information do we have we have uh, we're given the fact that ns is equals to three and t so let's try denote that in our sketch where is ns ns so this is the center of the circle s so ns is equals to three and t this circle is actually supposed to be bigger than how i made it look but well that is that the best way to approach a question is to start with the information that is given so obviously uh ns is equals to three and t that is the first thing i'll be thinking about so ns using the distance formula right let's go ahead and do that let's go ahead and do that uh, so this is equals to 3 and t we have 2 and 1 as the coordinates of n if we take s as our second point we're gonna have y2 being equals to b minus y1 which is equals to 1 the y value of n and then plus x2 which is equals to a minus x1 which is equals to 2 the x value of n if we square both sides we're gonna have b minus 1 squared plus a minus 2 squared we actually know the value of nt because nt is the radius of the circle we started with and that is square root of 18 so here we essentially squaring 3 multiplied by square root of 18 uh, if we square that we shall get 162 so let's just put that there uh, we have 162 we know that nt is perpendicular to qt and then we also know that qt is perpendicular to st so that tells us that the gradient of st will also be equals to 1 we can actually say that y of t minus y of s 
divided by x of t minus x of s should be equals to 1. So what is y of t that is minus 2? Uh, y of s that is b divided by y of t, uh, x of t minus 1 minus x of s which is a being equals to 1. So if we cross multiply, we're going to get minus 2 minus b is equals to minus 1 minus a. Uh, we can make 1 the subject of the formula here. Let's make b the subject of the formula. If we do that, we're going to get minus b being equals to minus 1 plus 2, that is 1, and then minus a. We divide both sides by minus, we get b is equals to a minus 1. Uh, we can call this our equation 1 and then what we want to do is to substitute this equation uh, into this equation. So let's do that. Uh, instead of having b, we're going to have a minus 1 and then minus 1 squared plus a minus 2 squared is equal to 162. So we're going to have a minus 2 squared plus a minus 2 squared being equals to 162. a minus 2 squared is equals to a squared minus 4a plus 4 plus a squared minus 4a plus 4. If we take 162 to the left hand side, we're going to get minus 162 is equals to 0. So we're going to get 2a squared minus 8a minus 154 is equal to 0. We can take 2 as a common factor and get a squared minus 4a minus 77 is equal to 0. So now it's just a matter of factorizing this. Which two numbers do we multiply and get minus 77? But when we add them, we get minus 4. That is minus 11 and positive 7. So a minus 11 multiplied by a plus 7 should be equal to 0. a is equal to 11 or a is equal to minus 7. So we need to pick a value that makes sense. You can see that s is on the third quadrant. So the y value must be negative. So a cannot be equal to 11. It is equal to minus 7. And now we have a. We can find b because b is equal to a minus 1. So that is minus 7 minus 1, which is minus 8. So the coordinates of s is actually minus 7 and minus 8.